Hey guys, Arlisha here and welcome to another video. Today I'm going to be talking to you about my top tips for working with gouache. A lot of you have had questions about this and I'm so excited to share some tips that will hopefully be really helpful for you guys. Before we get started, I want to talk a bit about the sponsor of this video, Skillshare. It's no secret at this point that Skillshare as an online learning platform is well loved by me here on this channel. If you're not familiar, Skillshare is a website with over 27,000 classes now on all kinds of amazing topics from painting to learning how to start your own business, photography, writing, drawing, all kinds of amazing creative topics taught by experts in their fields. Here you can see a list of some of the classes that I'm saving for later. I really love that Skillshare's annual membership is pretty affordable at less than $10 a month if you're on the annual plan, like I am. And if you're not sure about Skillshare, but you'd like to kind of check it out and see some of the classes they have available, I have a link down in the description where you can try it free for two months if you are new to the platform. There are some teachers who are starting to experiment with gouache classes as well, which is really exciting and helpful in regards to this video. And my next Skillshare class, which is going to be coming out later this month, is going to be on gouache as well. So let's get started. As we move on to talk about the different forms that gouache may take, we'll start with something that may look the most familiar to watercolor artists, which is dried gouache in pans. I have this gouache here in a palette. It's been here for a really long time, and I will just re-wet it with an eyedropper when I'm ready to use it. You can do this, and it does reactivate like watercolors to some extent, but I found over time that I much prefer to just squeeze out some gouache fresh from my tubes, as this is the easiest way, especially when you're first getting started, to handle the consistency of gouache and keep that the same. This strange contraption of a palette here, I will be doing a review and unboxing of this soon, and there's a link to it down in the description. This claims to be gouache. It claim it is, I mean, it is gouache, and it comes in these little weird jelly cups, and I promise we will talk more about it soon. But today we're gonna be focusing on tubes, which leads me to my first tip, which is use fresh paint. If you're first getting started with gouache, one of the biggest things that people have issues with is controlling the consistency. So I found that by using fresh paint, it's much easier to control how much water you need to add to get that nice smooth consistency because you're not trying to fight with dried paint or reactivated paint. You have something that's nice and creamy right away. My second tip is to use a limited palette. So I've squeezed out four colors here. Three is also a really good number. I've got a primary triad, a little bit of a variant there, and then I'm also gonna be using Burnt Umber to help me warm up my deeper tones so I'm not just using blue and they don't just get cool, but my deeper tones can stay warm as well. My third tip is to use synthetic brushes. I have some super cheap brushes here. Of course, I'll leave links down in the description. And I found that using synthetic brushes is really, really helpful because they don't hold as much water. If you jump right in with your big, juicy watercolor brushes, I found that I usually end up with too much water, my paints get too thin, and then I have a lot of trouble laying them on top of each other. So by starting out with these cheaper synthetic brushes that don't hold as much water, it's much easier to control the limited amount of water that I want to add to my gouache. What I'm doing here leads right into my next tip, which is if you're going to adjust the consistency of your gouache, it's good to work from thin to thick. So working in looser, lighter washes with more water first, and then building up thicker paint with more opacity on top of those layers. That's really kind of the only way you can do it with gouache. You can't really glaze thinner washes on top of thicker paint just because it's going to lift the paint that's already underneath. So when I'm working with gouache, if I want to lay down a wash of color to cover up the white of the page first, I will do that with thinner paint, especially in this case it allows me to still be able to see my sketch lines underneath. So I will start with something thinner and slowly build up the thickness as I go. I say slowly, but actually what I usually end up doing is going in with a thin wash and then I spend the majority of the time working with thicker paint. And you're really going to have to just find what works for you. Some people like to slowly build up that opacity 
capacity and not every area will even become that fully opaque gouache. There are even some people who work with gouache completely watered down all the time like watercolors and they do that because gouache can sometimes dry flatter and more predictable than even watercolors can, especially people who are working in graphic design or illustration and they want predictable flat washes all of the time. As you guys know, that's not necessarily my approach. I like those chunky painterly brush strokes when I'm working with gouache. It's one of my favorite things about working with opaque mediums in general. So I'm definitely not trying to get anything especially smooth or blended out. I really like working with thicker brush strokes. Another thing I really like about working with opaque mediums like this is that as you can see here, I'm able to adjust what may have been incorrect in my sketch. So I didn't really like the position of that one eye. So when I painted in the darkest values for that, I moved it somewhere other than where the sketch was. When you're working with watercolor, something like that is a bit trickier to do because the paints are transparent. And if your sketch lines aren't super light, that can still show through afterwards, even if you go in and adjust. This part of this tiny little painting isn't an official tip, but I'll mention it to you anyways, just as part of my process. When I'm working with gouache, I try to cover larger areas first. So I try to go in and cover as much as I can with big strokes with the largest brush I can use before moving on to the details. I find this is really helpful for me in establishing the overall color range of a piece before getting too caught up in details. And I also think this is one of the best ways to make that messier brush stroke look more effective, which is going in with larger shapes first and then refining those details as you go and kind of leaving those larger strokes to show through. If I was starting with a really super tiny brush, I wouldn't have these big, broad, bold strokes and I really love those. At this point, we're kind of starting to enter the messy phase of this tiny painting, where it's kind of hard to see what's going on. We're kind of losing some of our forms. And if this happens to you, it happens to me almost every single time, don't panic. Usually what's happening is that you're losing contrast. So at this point, I've covered a lot of area, but I've kind of lost the difference between my super light areas and the super dark areas. And knowing that that is what's happening is what kind of keeps me from throwing things like this in the trash. And my first couple of gouache attempts were kind of the only things that I ever threw in the trash because I was so frustrated first getting started with this medium because I didn't know things like what I'm hoping to be able to communicate with you guys today. So when things feel a bit lost and a bit messy, focus on contrast. Get those darker values back in if you had covered them up or establish your darker areas and your lighter areas once you've got those larger shapes of color filled in. That's really going to help to solidify everything and bring it all together. I found that if you have a good range of values, meaning that your darkest areas are established and you've got some nice highlights, you're able to experiment more with adventurous colors. I use this not just with gouache, but in watercolors or any other medium that I'm working with. If my values are good, then I can go crazy with the colors. I'm not worried too much about little mistakes that I'm seeing, like the fact that the pupils aren't the same size or facing the same direction at this point, because I know when I go and add in the color of the eye, or specifically the white of the eye, I can adjust that shape because I can cover up the darker value with a lighter value. Very, very nice thing about gouache. And it still won't be perfect. They're still gonna be a little wonky and a little crooked, but that's okay, I don't mind. This is just a practice thing and I just wanted to sh share some tips and things with you guys. The process of working on a piece with gouache coming from a watercolor background was so confusing to me at first. It was kind of my first experience of stepping into opaque mediums. 
and gouache was so so popular and still is pretty popular that I was like it has to be gouache I really want gouache to be the opaque medium that I work with and it was so frustrating to be honest one of the best things I ever did for my relationship with this medium was to try other things and take a break to see other people like acrylics and oils and spending time with those mediums that don't have as much of that drying shift or that allow for other benefits was really helpful for me to just get my hands on an opaque medium and just make a mess and experiment and learn things and then I was able to come back to gouache in a much healthier way and I would say that's probably one of my biggest tips is just keep trying trying, keep experimenting, allow yourself to make dozens and dozens of bad art pieces because when it comes to learning a new medium, quantity is so important. It's going to benefit you more if you're doing faces to draw 50 tiny little not good faces with the intent of learning along the way than to spend the same amount of time agonizing over one big face that you're trying and trying and trying to make perfect. Sometimes it's good to just Try something, figure out what doesn't work, and then try to make it better in the next little practice. As you can see, this little guy is actually only about the size of my index finger, which is way smaller than I usually paint with gouache, but I figured it would be a good example for the purpose of this video. My last tip is to try different types of paper. I'm showing you two different sketchbooks here. Neither of these are on cotton paper like our original sketch was. The first one is that handbook co travel log watercolor sketchbook and the second one is mixed media paper in a sketchbook that I got that I purchased from Chris Hong and this is really smooth mixed media paper and it's been one of my favorites to work on for gouache because the paint actually doesn't absorb into the paper very much and I really like that the paint sits on the surface of the paper. So you really do have to experiment and find what works best for you and what you like the most when it comes to working with this medium. So those are my biggest tips for working with gouache in the way that I like to use it. Everybody's approach is going to vary at least a little bit. So while not all of these techniques may apply specifically to you, I really hope that this is helpful for you in getting a better handle on this sometimes tricky medium. Thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch this video. If you're interested in trying Skillshare free for two months, you can find the link down in the description and I will see you guys next week. Bye.